Okay, welcome back. We're done talking about Global Illumination and Final Gathering. Actually, I'm just kidding. No, we're not. What we're going to do now is we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to approach this in a different technique. We're going to take Final Gathering, Global Illumination, and take the two and smash them together and come up with a totally unique way of creating indirect illumination. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and open up a new scene here. And the scene that you want to look for is 06 scene. GI plus Final Gather start. So go ahead and open that up. And this should look familiar. This is the same scene that we were working with in the Global Illumination tutorial, the apartment scene. And I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go to the render options over here. I'm going to go to renderer options. I'm going to pin that down. And if we go over here to GI and caustics, we can see we're using the same settings that we were using in the, the previous scene during Global Illumination. We have an accuracy size of 2048, search radius of 5. If we go over here and explore our lights, go to our lights, get all of our spotlights, which are the ones emitting photons, open up their shader PPG together, pin that down. If I go to photons, I'll see that I'm emitting 2 million photons per light. Uh, I have the same intensity, basically the same exact settings we had in the other scene. Let me go ahead and collapse those two. I'm going to hit preview. And I'm using again. I'm using a preview size of 640 by 480. When you hit preview, you should get something that looks like this. Now it's not rendering out the photon emission. That's because the photon map is frozen in place. And we can see that if we go to the render options here, we'll see under GI and caustics, rebuild is checked off, essentially freezing the map in place. And the map that we're using is one that I rendered out here and renamed to apartment dot ph map short for photon map so it renders out faster so we got a nice photorealistic result or whatever uh, of our scene here yeah the anti-aliasing is really low that's why it looks all jagged edged and all that and it's got a lot of artifacting but we can see that the global illumination itself is pretty good and pretty accurate now how can we use final gather with global illumination you're probably thinking wait a minute wait a minute Photon mapping, global illumination by itself, takes a, quite a while to render. If we throw final gathering in there, now we're going to be doubling our rendering time. You're crazy, man. What have, you, what have you been drinking? Well, that's not the case. We can actually use final gather to aid global illumination and have it render out faster. Don't believe me? Let's see. Okay. What we're going to use is final gather here. Let me just go ahead and turn off global illumination and I'm going to go to final gathering and I'm going to turn it on I'm going to turn my number of rays to 32 so a small number of rays and over here it's updating the viewport in our little preview render window here and it's rendering just with final gather it's not using global illumination just final gather I'm going to go ahead and skip the video ahead so you don't have to watch this okay so I finished rendering with final gather and this looks just like if we would have rendered without global illumination, just with the spotlights and the direct lighting. Well, that's because this isn't the ideal scene to use Final Gathering by itself. Now, combine Final Gather with global illumination, and now we're talking. Now we're cooking something up real good. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on with this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and forth a little bit here. I'm going to turn Final Gathering off, and I'm going to turn global illumination back on and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the name of the photon map that way I don't overwrite this old one here the one that has two million photons so I'm just gonna highlight the, the word apartment and name this I don't know I'll just name it to new so new photon map and I'm gonna hit rebuild I wanted to rebuild the photon map but it's going to take forever. As you can see here, it's going to take a really long time to emit 2 million photons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my lights over here. And hopefully you didn't close that PPG. If you did, just go and grab your lights again and open up their shader PPG. And I'm doing all of them at the same time. Now I got 2 million photons, which is taking, as you can see, a long time to render. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to highlight the number. And instead, I'm going to use a very small number of photons. I'm going to use 200 thousand instead so that's a very low number of photons now it's going to render a heck of a lot faster than uh than what we were rendering out before so let me go ahead and collapse that 
And we can see the photon emission is going really fast now as compared to before. But our results are going to be subpar. I mean, our results are going to be pretty nasty. If you remember from uh, the earlier global illumination videos, we saw that when we used a small number of photons, the result that we would get is very, very blotchy and, and not too good. Well, actually, this result actually doesn't look too bad because we're using a pretty big radius, but we do see some blotchiness here and things. So let's use a, a tighter, more physically accurate radius. We are seeing some blotchy on the walls there. So let's use a smaller radius, something like 2.5, and render that out again. Okay, so I changed my radius to 2.5. That's the new radius that I'm using, 2.5, so it's a little bit more physically accurate. But of course, as you remember from the other tutorials, the smaller that radius is, and if we have too small of a number of photons, we're going to get this nasty blotching effect which is what we're getting all over our scene on the furniture here on the walls even on the ceiling you can see it so to fix that you probably imagine well we gotta increase the number of photons which is gonna increase rendering time not so we can actually stick with a small number of photons like this right now we're using 600,000 photons total in our scene because 200k times 3 is 600k 600,000 so we were using 6 million photons before 2 million per light. Now we're only using 600,000. That's going to give us a horrible effect if we're using global illumination by itself, but we're not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to hit rebuild to freeze this map in place so that Mental Ray can use it later. And that later is coming up. I'm going to switch over to Final Gathering and I'm going to turn it on. And when I do that, this option here, Irradiance from Photo Map, that's when this one's going to come in handy. If I check this on, what Final Gathering is going to do, it's going to say, okay, we have a frozen photon map. Perfect. Let me take that photon map. I'm going to run an irradiance lookup operation on it. And I'm going to use that to help me better calculate Final Gather and to actually speed up my Final Gathering time and give it a little bit of a rendering boost. So that's what we're doing right now. Right now, it's going to go ahead and it's rendering out the Final Gather on top of the global illumination. So you're probably wondering, Hmm, I wonder what the results of that's going to be. That should be pretty interesting. Well, I'm not going to have you watch the entire Final Gathering uh, rendering right here, so let me just skip the video ahead. Okay, it finished rendering. Now you're going to notice two things here, two immediate things. Number one, all that blotchiness from the global illumination map went away. That's because the Final Gather map comes in and it cleans it up. It interpolates it and does it pretty physically accurately and cleans it up for us. So think of it this way. The global illumination comes in and lays the foundation work for the final gathering to come in afterwards and clean it up, detail it, and make it look nice and spick and span. So essentially what this does is it's going to go ahead and global illumination is going to lay the foundation work. So it's just going to give a rough uh, photon calculation of the indirect illumination in the scene. Then Final Gather is going to come in afterwards and clean up, fix the blotchiness, give a little bit more detail, and give a little more physical accuracy to our lighting. So th the two can work together as a team, and they're a really good team, believe me. And can help each other out to render out a little bit faster and to get very realistic, physically accurate results using less photons and less of these rays. So I got a pretty good, um, a pretty good render here and I'm only using 32 rays which is kind of unheard of you know you're, you're not supposed to use 32 rays you should be using something like five, 500 or more not 32 yet this was a pretty decent result for that uh, for that amount of rays and it's because the global illumination map and the final gather map work together to help each other out so that's pretty good now the second thing you notice about this is that it came out pretty dark that's because the final gather was introduced and the final gather is going to go ahead and darken this up a little bit. If you want to fix up that darkness, we can do one of two things. We can go back to global illumination, go back to our lights and increase the intensity of the global illumination right here. So we can increase it from 25,000 to say 50,000 and render the photon map out again. So that's one thing that we can do. Another thing that we can do is we can actually, let me go over here and down here in the map file settings for final gathering, I'm going to switch it from overwrite to only use final gather points from file. 
So just like global illumination gets frozen, I can freeze the final gathering up so that it doesn't re-render it over and over again every time I make a change. And I'm about to make a change right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just collapse that to get it out of the way. I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go down to edit current pass. Open up this PPG here. I'm going to go to pass shaders. I'm going to go down here to the lens shader and I'm going to go to overwrite camera lens shaders. And in this box, I'm going to go to add and you probably guessed it. What we're going to do is we're going to add that tone mapping shader that's under the lens directory. The simple tone mapping shader like what we did in the final gather tutorial with the little city and everything. And use this tone mapping shader to brighten this up and correct the gamma. Now right now, 2.2 uh, gamma might be too high for this specific scene. As you see, it kind of washes everything out and kind of just overshoots it, makes it a bit too bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for lower setting, something like 1.8. And this gamma correction is going to work a lot better for us. We can see that uh, the detail is retained. The final gathering really did a great job of getting rid of our photon blotching. Okay, so this is a little bit brighter. Uh, looks a lot better than before. Of course, this is one way to brighten this up. If you don't like this look or you don't want to go with tone mapping, you can always go back to the lights and re-render another photon map with a higher intensity. So either option is there for you. You can do it either way. And whatever works for you, works for you, you know. So let me go ahead and I'm going to take this gamma correction down to 1 so it, it essentially turns it off. And we're back to square one. And I'm just going to show you real quick how to just uh, walk you through in, uh, changing the intensities here. Okay. I'm going to turn off final gathering for now. I'm going to go to global illumination. And I'm going to turn on rebuild. And I'm going to change this intensity to about 75,000. Now that's going to be pretty bright. That's going to be pretty blown out at least if, uh, when global illumination is concerned. Okay, so it's rendering here, and the global illumination is very, very bright at 75,000. Actually, it doesn't look too bad, to be honest with you. But it is pretty bright. Uh, some areas are kind of blown out a little bit. But uh, we're going to go ahead and fix that. Now I'm going to turn Rebuild off, so I don't have to rebuild this map over and over and over and over again. Let me go to Final Gathering. I'm going to turn it back on. And I have to make sure that I switch the map setting from the un from frozen to unfrozen which is overwrite existing file so now fi final gathering is going to kick in and it's going to use the global illumination map to go ahead and give it a little boost in rendering I'm just going to go ahead and skip this so you don't have to watch it okay so I finished rendering final gather and now we have a much brighter image this looks really really good you can see the final gather did an excellent job of getting rid of the global illumination splotching everywhere it gave us more accuracy. We can see it gave us awesome shadows underneath the couch. They're a little bit more defined than when we, when we were using global illumination by itself. It also cut some of our overly bright lighting down and made it a little bit more manageable, a little bit more realistic. Of course, our background image, we don't have a background image. We're using a giant sphere around this scene that has this hazel blue color to it. But you can go ahead and apply some kind of a grid object back there or even a sphere with uh, a picture mapped onto it so you can take a picture of a downtown area or something like that and put it in the background to kind of sell the effect of this being an apartment in some city or something because see our couch looks excellent the lighting is just simply beautiful 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 completely photorealistic of course we still have aliasing so now let's go ahead and fix that i'm going to go down to the map file settings for final gather and i'm going to freeze it by turning on uh, switching it to the only use final gather points from file so now we get these really fast renders. See that? Okay. Now, it seems ridiculous that I was able to get those awesome um, final gather results using only 32 rays. But there you go. That's the power of global illumination and final gathering coming together and fusing together. Kind of like some nuclear explosion of, of uh, rendering goodness. Okay. So we have this set to frozen. So it's not set to rebuild. This one's also frozen in place, which is perfect. Okay, the next thing to do is to go to rendering over here and change our anti-aliasing settings so we get better quality renders and get rid of all these little jagged edges and things. All right, but before I go ahead and do that, I'm going to go over here to edit, edit current pass. I'm going to open up this simple tone mapping shader here and I'm going to knock this up to 1.8 again and see what I, what I get. If I get a nice image that I like, I'll keep it. If not, I'll just get rid of the shader. 
makes no difference and it does add some brightness to here it tries to correct the gamma and that's pretty good um, to me that honestly looks a lot more photorealistic than without the gamma correction if if it looks too washed out to you if you don't like the way that looks you don't have to use this shader uh, me personally I like to use it it honestly looks more like a photograph to me than when it's just rendered without it so I'm gonna keep gamma correction uh, on to 1.8 to me looks pretty good let me go ahead and close that and now let's change these anti-aliasing settings what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the minimum to one and I'm gonna take the max up to three and my sampling contrast I'm gonna leave it alone I think it's I think it's fine so now this render is gonna take a lot longer to render because of course we're rendering a higher quality now we have a lot of anti-aliasing going on to get rid of all those little jagged edges and things so I'm just gonna go ahead and skip ahead step into my little time machine here and I'll meet you a couple of minutes from now when this finishes rendering okay so I finished rendering. There it is. Your nice photorealistic render with uh, gamma correction. You got Final Gathering, Global Illumination working together in perfect harmony to create awesome, awesome rendered images through Mental Ray. So you see, Mental Ray isn't that bad. When you learn how to use Mental Ray correctly and somebody guides you through it and you learn the ins and outs, Mental Ray can be a lot of fun to use and can be pretty, pretty useful. So that ends it for learning how to use Global Illumination and Final Gathering together. And in the next video, we're going to go ahead and talk about caustics. I'm sure you heard me talk about caustics or mention it a few times right here in the Global Illumination tab. And we never actually got to use caustics. But now in the next videos, we're going to go ahead and use caustics and see how those work. So I'll see you there.